Thank you, Mr. Williams, and a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. As per usual, it's my task to share with you the Health Emergency Operating Center's situation report uh, for today, November 18. And so uh, we are all aware that St. Kitts and Nevis have only reported 19 confirmed cases to date. They have all recovered. Globally, based on the World Health Organization's dashboard, over 54 million persons have been confirmed with COVID-19, and the death toll uh, has reached 1.3 million. I think between last week and now, uh, there was almost 4 million persons added uh, to this count, case count. In the United States of America, uh, the total number of confirmed cases passed the 11 million mark uh, last weekend. And in terms of the death toll, uh, it stands at 248,707. What's happening in the Caribbean region? Uh, to date, there are over 282,000 confirmed cases and the death toll continues to along, it's, it's, it's quite low, and it now stands at 4,817. This just gives you an idea as to what's happening in the neighboring islands in Jamaica. Uh, they have reported over 10,000 cases, Bahamas over 7,000, Trinidad and Tobago over 6,000, Guyana over 4,000, uh, Belize, almost 5,000. Barbados stands at 250 confirmed cases. Antigua and Barbuda, their, uh, their case count is, stands at 134. St. Lucia, it's now at 178. Uh, to be more specific, uh, this gives you an idea as to what transpired within the last 14 days. And so within the last two-week period in St. Lucia, they would have reported 81 new cases within the last two-week period, bringing their total to 178. Dominica had uh, reported 18 cases within the last two-week period. Barbados, 12 cases within the last two weeks, bringing their total to 150, and Antigua and Barbuda, uh, six cases, bringing their case count to 134. Uh, here in St. Kitts and Nevis, our borders are open and we continue to receive returning nationals and international travelers, tourists, and so today we would have tested or we would, we would have conducted uh, as many as 3,554 tests to date. Uh, as you are aware, uh, inbound passengers, meaning our returning nationals, our international travelers and tourists, some of them have opted to be quarantined and some have chosen uh, to vacation in place. And so we have almost approximately 254 such individuals and we have uh, four individuals in pre-approved uh, quarantine at home with commi uh, Commission of Police Prescribed Security. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm inviting you to actually log on to this website or URL, www.knatravelform.kn, uh, and that brings you to the, uh, the home page where you would find the entry form. So if you're thinking about traveling to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis at this time, we invite you to this website. Uh, you will be uh, greeted by the health and travel protocols, which would guide your completing the, um, the, the entry form. All inbound pas passengers must complete this entry form, and you are also expected to take a RT-PCR test, a COVID test, within te three days of travel. Uh, this test must be conducted at an accredited lab. At the end of the day, we really want uh, the test to be, the, the report that you send to us to be authentic. 
All right, so that's why we are stipulated that it should be done at an accredited lab. Inbound travelers would be granted permission once you would have uh, uploaded the negative COVID-19 PCR test report, once you would have provided us uh, reservations which you would have confirmed uh, at one of the COVID-19 hotels and once you would have uh, submitted the various consent forms you would find on the site. And so it's very important to get that PCR test done within three days of travel, uh, upload the, for, uh, the report and you really need to give us your hotel reservation. Please note that both the, the lab report or the, the lab test and your hotel reservation, uh, they are verified before you are granted approval to, to enter the Federation. All right, and so um, there are persons who are presently vacationing in place and they would have um, been here for over seven days. They would have uh, gotten their uh, PCR test done at about day seven, day eight, and they, are now, they now have the option to go on this Kittishan Highlights Tour. And so this is the tour, this is the only tour that has been approved for phase one of our opening. And so individuals can opt to leave their hotel in a COVID-19 certified ground transport. Uh, the, then the first stop would be at Timothy Hill where you will remain in the vehicle and you can observe the peninsula, you can look at the Atlantic Ocean on the left and the Caribbean Sea on the right. And so after you would have left Timothy Hill, then you uh, will be driven into Bastille and then there is a restroom stop organized at Port Zante and then you can circle Bastille and then observe the various historical sites in uh, our beautiful town of Bastyr. So I think you will you know, be able to see the circus, uh, the Catholic Church, the Independence Square, etc. And then you would then be taken to the Brimstone Hill, uh, the, the Gibraltar of the Caribbean, and then you head back to the hotel. And so for phase one, uh, the Kittishan Highlights Tour you know, has been approved. Ladies and gentlemen, approximately 401 passengers would have arrived in the Federation uh, between October 31st and the present. And so over this period, we would have received 401 uh, inbound passengers and just for, uh, you know, transparency and completion, 405 persons would have departed the Federation. Please note that a significant proportion of these individuals would have come from the United States of America and the other uh, source markets, including the United Kingdom and Canada. Okay, so as I said before, a significant proportion of these inbound passengers came from the United States of America and, uh, our, and the other source markets, Canada and the United Kingdom. Uh, many of the territories, countries who would have reopened their borders ahead of us, they are all experiencing a surge in the number of COVID-19 cases. And so it's very important that we note that it's just a matter of time uh, for us in the Federation uh, when our case count will increase. So I want us to, to, to pause and take note of this. Why is this so? Because right now here in St. Kitts, we do not have any active cases. However, the virus is escalating around us. When you look at uh, the neighboring islands and our source markets, they are seeing a surge in number of COVID-19 cases. Our borders are opened and p persons are coming into the Federation from these territories. 
And so the risk of importing the COVID-19 virus is very high. In other words, we don't know if the virus has come in as yet. We don't know. We are not sure. It's going to be a, a, a matter of weeks before uh, we find that out. And so I, it, I am imploring all of us to, to, to be very careful as we proceed, as we go into public spaces. We need to operate as though the virus is here. And there are steps that we can take to protect ourselves from the virus, and there are steps that you and I can take to prevent the spread of the virus, if indeed it is here. So what can you and I do to protect ourselves from this virus? Wearing the face mask. This has been tested and proven. There are a number of persons who were uh, in contact with, interacting with individuals who were positive, and just the fact that they had on a face mask protected them from the virus. So it works. So I'm imploring all of us to wear a face mask when in public places. Secondly, maintain hand hygiene. Make sure we make our hands remain clean, good old soap and water, hand sanitizer, very, very important. So just in case you would have touched a contaminated surface infected with the virus, you would have uh, cleaned your hands, very, very important. Always maintain that safe distance of six feet uh, between yourselves and others when in a public space. And uh, we are being advised by Caribbean Public Health Agency, Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, avoid crowds. Avoid crowds. Avoid events with significant number of persons. Because you and I, we do not know uh, if there is anyone who would be present in the crowd uh, who may be a carrier of, of, of this virus. And so these are the steps that have helped others to protect themselves from the virus. And these are the steps that we do have at our disposal uh, to, to utilize and employ to protect ourselves from this virus. These are the steps that can prevent a surge in the number of cases. I want us to be the exception in terms of reopening our borders without a surge in, in, in the number of cases. Wearing our face masks. We are pretty face masks. That motivates me to wear mines. Just for uh, additional information, there is yet another uh, vaccine candidate on the horizon, Moderna's uh, coronavirus vaccine. Uh, this announcement came earlier this week. Uh, it cl uh, they claim that it provides more than 90, it's, they claim that uh, it's more than 94% effective at preventing co COVID-19. Uh, apparently two, dose two doses will be required. Vac the vaccine requires very specific manufacturing and transportation conditions. Um, and there's a quote from Fi Pfizer's chief executive saying, and I quote, a great day. Uh, this is a great day for science and humanity. So at present, there are two uh, known vaccine candidates for COVID-19. Uh, I would have shared this information last week. Last week, I highlighted uh, the vaccine produced by Pfizer and BioNTech. Um, basically, this, this one also requires two doses, and uh, the company gives, you know, provided us the assurance that they can provide a couple million doses by the end of this year. And, of course, uh, I must mention dengue. Uh, we are just coming out of uh, a period of a lot of rain last week. And so it's our duty and our responsibility to walk around our homes and rid ourselves of uh, breeding sites, the mosquito breeding sites in and around our homes. In other words, we need to empty and clean and dispose of all those containers holding 
our water in and around our homes. Thank you.